namaste to my instagram friends so today our topic is nothing but how to do the breathing exercise or the pranayam so let's get into the topic what is pranayama okay so pranasya yamaha pranayama it is nothing but the in and out flow of prana or the life force is called as pranayama just see the length or expansion uh, the in sanskrit ayama means the length of it okay so this is what prana yama that word means prana means nothing but the life energy or the vitality life force there are different different meanings for it and uh, it is nothing but life so how we can control this life or how we can maintain the length of it or how to control the expansion of it there is only one inhalation and exhale so i'm just uh, waiting for few more friends to come to start the live session thank you all for joining very good morning good morning yes from both platforms youtube so if you want to get more clarity in my video and audio kindly switch to the youtube uh, because i have connected a very good uh, mic to the youtube so that you can uh, get clear instructions but there is no problem you can stay in instagram uh, there is no issue but you you will get more clarity in youtube and uh, let's start so it is actually very surprising isn't it it's only about you know our life is actually in between an inhalation and exhalation isn't it really surprising and it is really shocking because inhalation if any anything happens between this inhalation and exhalation we are done you know there is no life so it is actually a game or a play between an inhalation and exhalation so how we can control in what all ways we can manage it that's the beauty of pranayam and as we get advanced in our to learn a lot and i have to uh, gain a lot of knowledge in this area the more i read i feel that i don't know anything about it so i feel we all have to explore more into this breathing exercise to know what it is so those who are not practicing yoga you don't have to worry about uh, see i am not a yoga person see but you are inhaling and exhaling isn't it so why don't you just try to see what is happening inside me it's not about yoga it's about your own breathing how it is happening inside you are you not feeling curious at how your heart beats and how your breathing happens in your day to day life so it is actually interesting to know the inside world of yours so this is why i am here today to teach you the nine breathing exercise or eight it's a, sometimes it says eight exercises breathing exercise but i am going to teach you nine types of breathing exercise that is in hatha yoga so it is actually for as i am a doctor so i will be teaching you the breathing exercise along with the benefits of it so you can you will get an idea where where and all i can uh, implement this type of breathing exercise to get the desired benefit for example uh, you are suffering from a sinusitis right now the climate is changing so you you can have some flu or common cold headache etc etc so how can you handle it through pranayam so i will teach you step by step everything before that i, I will i would like to give you a few more information there are actually five types of prana the, the vayu vayu means it's nothing but the air or the wind this prana abana samana udana vyana these are the five types of prana or the life force which is involved in us this prana can be actually some some vayus if i am not going much into the theory because you may not understand what it is so i'll just tell you what is uh, so much in this prana you know so you may get uh, like what but a full textbook sometimes you know there are so many uh, textbooks in in, uh, in certain uh, religion as well as Uh, there are some grandhas and upanishads everything they have told about the pranayama a lot so just 
one inhalation and exhalation. We can uh, make variations or we can uh, give a good pathway for this air to breathe in that certain order or certain manner. So that way, if you do, if you control that, then you can get the, uh, what to say, the so-called uh, happiness or equilibrium or homeostasis inside your system. So these are the five char characteristics of uh, Vayu or the air, but these are actually some uh, air is actually uh, in your thoracic. Some Vayus are actually, there is an involved uh, stomach to the uh, anal region. There is Vayu and you know, uh, and the full body, you have a space inside. So if you think that way, these are the five characteristics of Vayu. So when you learn pranayama from a yoga class, you may not understand the details of it. That's why I'm here to give some awareness about the pranayama and ayama. The, so the, those who have uh, come late, I'll just tell you ayama means the lengthening or the expansion or the control we do for the in and out flow of breath. So without wasting much time, let's get into our uh, practices. The first one, is called as a Bastrika Pranayama. So we will start with the Bastrika Pranayama. And uh, this uh, Pranayama, you have to, I will tell you the rules and regulations, not rules as such, but it's always better to do the Pranayama three, five and nine times. So it is, we always uh, keep the odd numbers for it. Second thing, you have to sit in a very comfortable position. Don't think that I cannot sit in on a chair. I have to do a Patmasana or a full lotus pose to go for a pranayama. No, actually what you need to do is just sit straight with a straight spine. Even if you are lying down, you can do. You can sit on a chair and you can do. You can walk and do. You know, that, that, that's not an issue, but only thing that your spine should be straight. Why your spine should be straight? Because the prana energy will go uh, flow through the spine from the root of the spine to the tip of your spine. So it like the vayu or the prana should flow easily through the spine. So if you are hunching or your sitting position is very complicated, then the prana will, one is the sitting position and the second thing, you have to be in a very relaxed, um, uh, what to say, you should not be in a hurry to do it. Okay, so you should find a peace of mind and certain situation. And uh, one more thing, if you can be in an uh, empty uh, bowel, it is actually more good to watch yourself what is happening. You should not f uh, fill your stomach with food. So this is the ideal time of doing pranayama. So now let's, and uh, there is one more, I forgot to like, re, re, uh, you know, the doctor will prescribe you three times in a day. The same way you can do when you get up in the morning and then before you, uh, what to say, when you take a rest in the afternoon, you can do one time and before you sleep also, you can practice pranayama. This is actually more uh, comfortable for everyone, I feel, you know, because if I tell you, you have to do at, at certain, this time, like sunrise time and sunset time, you may not be able to do it. So the perfect time of uh, doing pranayam for us in our day-to-day -day life for a common man is when you get up in the morning and when you go to the sleep, before you go to the sleep. So first one is called as the Bastrika Pranayama. You don't have to learn the name. You can just uh, uh, save, uh, my video will be saved in both platforms. You can again watch it. So. The first one is a forceful inhalation and exhalation. Bastriga is like the bellows of the, you know, the goldsmith. You know, they, they do the, you know, that kind of sound is heard from your thoracic or, you know, from your throat or the nose. So how to do that? You have to have an active inhalation and an active exhalation. So let's go for the, I will just demonstrate you. You can do it like three times and the duration I told you. Uh, three, five, and nine, and then uh, you can do two times in a day uh, or three times. Now you can just gently touch the stomach with your two uh, hands to feel more uh, mindful about yourself and then
So in this way, <clears throat> sorry, uh, you can hear my active inhalation and active exhalation. Got it? So see my even my vocal throat was activated. That's why you could hear a difference in my voice even. So that much beneficial. So what does that mean? The pranayama actually amazing in vocal cord or if there is any phlegm inside your throat, it can come out. Okay. Second thing, this is actually a cleansing process. So after this, sometimes you may spit. Okay, uh, you know what, the people who smokes, they have to do this kind of breathing exercise. Otherwise, their expiry of their lungs will be very soon. So, Bastriga Pranayama and Kabalbati is very, very good for cleansing your lungs, your stomach and your vocal cord. So, when you do this, even I can feel that now, you know, there is a secretion coming inside my throat. You know, the, because the the dry passage was just active. So this is the detoxifying your system. So that's why I uh, took it as the first pranayama of the day. So Bastriga Pranayama, active inhalation and active exhalation. I have demonstrated one time. Like this, you have to repeat for three times in the morning. So Kabal Bhati is different, okay? You, the people who are uh, practicing yoga here may get a confusion. What is the difference between Bastriga and Kabal Bhati? People always get confused between these two pranayam. Why? Because in Kabal Bhati, you take the inhalation very passively, but you are forcefully doing your exhalation like this. So here you are hearing only my exhalation, not inhalation, but in Bastrika it is there, is, there was an in and an out, but in Kapal Bhati there is only out, outwards movement for your exhalation, like keep on, like a rhythmic pattern. Kabal Bhati, if you ask me why I am doing this to, to make you understand is, Bastriga is obviously, it is a cleansing, it is a detoxifying, but Kabal Bhati is also the same. But what is the difference of Kabal Bhati is, it is more of uh, fat mobilizing and it is a skull breathing people say. It is a brain massage. So when you are keep on exhaling forcefully, your breathing center is activated. Okay, because in our uh, fourth year, we have to learn the research papers on yoga and different breathing exercise. So thus I came to know that Kabal Bhati is not a small breathing exercise. It is having a lot of benefits. And Kabal Bhati even fox your induction center. So it's actually a Divya Darsha Pradayini. So it will open up your Divya Shakti. You know, it's actually, it will open up your Atnya Chakra and it will give you the inducions, okay, because it will stimulate your third eye. So it will give you a lot of uh, good in your induction, it will make you uh, good decisions in your life, you can, you can be more logical in your thinking. Bastriga down here, but uh, if you ask me Bastriga or Kabal Bhati, which is having more benefits, I will tell you to go for Kabal Bhati. Okay, but Kabal Bhati, there is one contraindication or I can tell you there is one demerit for Kabal Bhati is it should not be practiced for the people who have undergone stroke, heart patients and um, those who are undergone surgery, those people should stay away from uh, Kabal Bhati because it is having a lot of uh, triggering or it will uh, stimulate their active and uh, they, the people who are taken, taking medications, it will not be that cool for them like the normal people. So it is actually advised for the normal uh, people, but diabetes, uh, hypertension, they don't have to uh, be afraid of this. But I'm just telling about the situation, those who have undergone surgery, heart patients, stroke and epilepsy, even you know, the people who get fits also should be uh, stay away stay away from the Kabal Bhati and Bastiga, both practices, because 
it is having that kind of push you know inside and it is very very strong inside so this is highly recommended highly 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 recommended for the people who are having a lot of mucus in their system so it is very good for kids who are having uh, sore throat you know they often uh, fall sick cold cough these are uh, in this situation excellent and the people who are going for weight loss this is one of the best one to detoxify the system uh, sometimes the people who are having metabolic rate really low they also can go for this because it will improve their metabolic activity so i hope you understood what is bastrika pranayama and kapalbhati bastrika and kapalbhati like this you can repeat for in one inhalation kapalbhati you can exhale for 10 minimum breath i can go for 60 to 100 exhalation in one breathing in i will put the video of my practice and i can even go to 150 exhalation because of my practice so in one inhalation you have to keep on exhale like you have to in kapalbhati like did you did you see the exhalation from my uh, throat you can understand inhalation and you don't have to worry about the exhalation it automatically you are just leaving it in a in regular interval of time that's all so that is about the bastrika and kapalbhati now the third one i would like to teach you is ujjayi pranayama ujjayi pranayama ujjayi the word itself is like a like an ocean sound like a sea sound how a gushing sound of your sometimes when you snore you have you might have heard people snoring and they will you can feel there is a small contraction in their uh, throat throat muscles okay so there how the people will be inhaling mm, how how they snore this is the way is actually a little funny but i have to tell you this so that you will not forget so you always have to remember ujjayi is like a snoring sound so here uh, you have to go for yeah so here you have to do a normal inhalation and exhalation but can you just try right now see you have to just make a sound with your throat so that the sound hits your upper palate you know in your mouth there is an upper palate okay so you have to feel the sound is actually touching your upper palate and when you exhale also the same so let's go for the practice see the sound so you have to feel an ocean sound inside your throat you are making it you are purposefully making a sound so here again you go for i will teach you one more step in this you are making a big sound when you breathe here uh, people or uh, you know even uh, like the yoga teachers they teach you jalandhara bandha what is jalandhara bandha you don't get confused with the big big terms in it jalandhara bandha is nothing but the chin to chest lock it is a bandha it's a control so those who are having thyroid issues those who are having those who are singers here those who uh, you know use your throat much like teachers out here um and uh, what all like all the people who use their throat and the medical issues like thyroid what the thyroid is situated mainly in this and uh, with the ujjayi pranayama here again we will go for three times but the next time i would like to teach you the chin to chest lock after your inhalation and how much you need to hold like you have to take a breathing in and then hold 1 2 3 4 5 because five holding is the minimum time you inhale for example if i inhale nine inhalation if i take i have to hold it for nine seconds and then like this i have to leave the nine seconds out so you can count your not nine you know you can if i have taken nine i can leave like 10 to 12 exhalation because always your inhalation will be less and your exhalation will be more 
but in yoga we balance it okay that is what is called as yogic breathing you just kind of balance your inhalation and exhalation but usually if you like when you are going for pranayam practice if your exhalation is a little more you don't have to worry about it so there is a new breathing called as 4 is to 7 is to 8 4 7 8 breathing if you google it you can um, see you know immediately it the uh, articles pop pop up with 4 7 8 numbers this is very very uh, what to say uh, now these states it's very common 4 7 8 breathing and that is 4 inhalation 7 holding and 8 exhalation that means always your inhalation uh, exhalation will be double of your inhalation so that's why they hold it for 7 seconds in between and they leave out that is another thing that is actually I have already taught you uh, during our stress management time and I, if you type how to breathe we had a live session I think few months back about other types of breathing but today I am focusing only on Hatha Yoga text uh, the, our traditional breathing okay now so you understood Ujjayi Pranayama that you are taking, for example, a common uh, man, you know, when you are working, everything, you are, uh, you will not have a lengthy breathing because you are involved in some works. So that time maybe you will have only four counts of inhalation. So for example, that's all. And then you lock it. Two, three, four, five, six, you can hold if you want. And then like this, you can do six or seven. Anyway, you have to just about the Ujjayi Pranayama. So the people who are having thyroid or any other hormonal imbalance, you can practice Ujjayi. So you got the demonstration, how many times you have to do and how you have to do and the therapeutic benefits also I have told you. Now the next one is, yeah, uh, this is actually you have to know a little bit theory because your right side is called as the sun and your left side is called as the moon so right side is heating you just uh, close your eyes and just fix that in your brain this is my right side is sun and my left side is moon so right side is heating and left side is that is called as sushumna nadi you don't have to uh, that is called as the balance uh, you know center so just understand left is my moon and it is cooling so whenever you uh, activate your right side actually you are heating your system whenever you uh, close your right and inhale activate your left that means you are cooling your system hope you understood so when you are doing anuloma viloma that means in and out practices actually you are stimulating or you are activating only your right side and this actually surya your right side you just imagine your sun which is heating this will be good for common cold sinusitis headache all that even fever you can do the surya left side if you're only doing in and out flow of your breath through the left side it is actually cooling so for high bp and the people who are having anxiety they have a lot of tensions and uh, the people who have acidity those people have to stimulate more in the winter and you can do the chandra that is the moon for the summer so if you are just imagine you don't have an air condition in a summer season you can just close your eyes and you can make your own air condition so your body will not be heated and some people will be heated up just because of the psychological fact that there is no air condition Simply your mind will be upset and you think there is no air condition and that's why I'm sweating and you make it, make it, make it and ultimately you sweat. So you have to calm down yourself in certain situation because every time it will not be your, have only one method from your inside is you cannot get materials all the time. You cannot get tablets all the time. It's a midnight 3 a.m. or sorry, 2 a.m. in the morning. There are no hospitals and uh, what you will do so many things you have to learn by yourself if anything happens for your child you have to have if you are a mom if you are a father if you are a brother a good brother if you are a good sister you have to have certain understanding about the lifestyle and some home remedies so that you can instantly heal anyone or you can self heal yourself so this is what my intention of every session that 
common man should know certain tips and lifestyle in their day to day life to handle themselves. So that's why I'm giving all this awareness every Saturday. Now, the, leave that topic away. Now, let's get into our Surya Anuloma Viloma. That is the right side nostril breathing. This is called as Nasiga Mudra. So actually you have to fold this second and third finger. And when you do it in the beginning, you will get confused how many fingers I have and you know, you will be confused. But if to make it easy, you can just use your two fingers. Got it? Like my uh, clients here, they can just fold their two fingers and then close their left and then inhale and then exhale. So you have to go for very slow and don't do this. I will uh, teach you uh, the right pattern. See, you have to make your spine straight and then lengthy inhalation and lengthy exhale. How much you can uh, make it lengthy, that much good, okay? And you have to feel your chest and, you know, stomach that is getting full, not like this. A lengthy inhalation, you can keep doing when I'm talking and a lengthy exhalation. So when you do this, don't go for the shoulder movement like this. Or when you are doing the prana, I have seen people, they put their uh, hands down on their laps and they do like this. So how you, you, the prana, the energy will be flowing in you. It will be very, very difficult. So here you have to see, instead of hunching, you have to make your spine upright and your shoulder open up a little bit and then make your tailbone well seated in your chair and then make your nasiga mudra or the two hand, two fingers breathing and then you can close your one side and inhale and exhale through the other side for three, five and nine times. Hope you are uh, understood with the anuloma viloma. Now we can go for the left side breathing. So I'll make it easy. You can just press your right side with your thumb and inhale and exhale through the moon. So hope you understood that beautiful sound of your breath. The breath is actually, pranayama is actually a science. It is not any tradition. It is not a religion. It is a science. And your life is actually revolving around this inhalation and exhalation. Okay. So once you master your breath, you are actually mastering your own emotions. Will you agree with that point? Because whenever you are emotional, you can see you're, you're angry, you are sad, you are romantic. In all these situations, you can see there, there is a lot of difference. There is change in your breathing pattern. Whenever your mom is angry with you, she will be this kind of breathing, isn't it? So they will do that. Breathing pattern is increased. And whenever you are uh, there is a rain outside and you feel so dirty and you will be very soothing you will be watching through the windows and this kind of breathing so you that time automatically your body or whenever you are in on a vacation and you are just relaxing in the nature you your breathing will be very smooth and soothing so this is the difference between the emotions and the breathing so when you are mastering your breath you are actually mastering your emotions. So this is the difference between, uh, oh, sorry, connection between the breath and the emotions. So now you understood the moon in and out. Now we are going to cross it. So actually this is very good for our brain to balance when you cross it. So for example, Surya Bhedana. Now I'm going to take the in from the right and out through the left. So how it will be? It will be like this. And you close it. Again, take it. And leave it. Now, 
this is the in from the right and you are ex excel through the left now reverse that is chandra phedana so here actually they are breaking it so they are piercing from the left to the right so that's why the word came like phedana phedana means crossing or it is piercing there are different uh, meaning for that so now from the left again you may ask this question that what is the difference between anu that the previous one anuloma viloma and phedana actually uh, for example you are shivering with fever okay or you are having a lot of phlegm and mucus inside and you are having a severe headache with sinusitis i may advise you to go for the previous one that is anuloma viloma that is so you can go for nine times of surya anuloma viloma and then three times of chandra anuloma viloma just to balance the cold and hot inside you but you uh, you are uh, having a normal life so in that case i will tell you go for surya bhedana and chandra bhedana equally five five times so i always uh, take in my classes three times because it will not waste much time one thing and they are getting uh, see many people will be having many ailments or they will be undergoing certain situation i can i cannot uh, give a customized way of uh, breathing for each and every one so what i will do as a general i will always tell them to go for three and whenever you are sick then you can change the ratios so this is the ratio and there is one more thing i would like i forgot to mention in the beginning that is there are three uh, see out of our one inhalation and exhalation there are three things involved in pranayama one is rejaga puraga and uh, see so first thing is puraga that that is you are actually you are inhaling and you are holding okay and then kumbhaga means what the, you might have heard about the kumbhaga practice what is kumbhaga kumbhaga means holding it okay and then uh, sorry rejaka means exhalation rejaka means exhalation so you are taking it that is puraga puraga means the word itself you understood it is filling and that kumbhaga means holding and then rejaka means exhaling so these are the three things involved but i am not teaching in this live session how to do the kumbhaka practice because that you need a good guidance and a lot of time to hold you know that holding and all i have to see you uh, through the videos then only i can understand that whether you are doing in the right pattern or not okay so holding is the second level of breathing first a common man needs to do only the inhalation and exhalation after mastering it you can go for the holding that means i will just show you how it is like you can so i was inhaling for nine counts and i hold for nine counts and i exhale rejaga for another nine times so this is one is to one is to one ratio so this is called as the kumbhaga pranayama so what i have done is kumbhaga surya bhedana so i just hold it for another nine seconds that's it now let's next one we can go for is the cooling breathing exercise this is very very interesting so cooling breathing exercise you will love it because this is just to make you cool second thing the people who are having uh, acidity and gastritis uh, you have burning sensation Th this is actually very much advised for you guys but it is little funny uh, the gestures of it is little funny so let's go for the first one so just imagine there are three sisters named sheetali sheetkari and sadanda so this way you can memorize it and how the sheetali looks like they, you have to make a tube with your tongue so you have to you know just uh, take fold your tongue from either side 
uh, or in your mouth inside and then you have to it's a central ac you have to take the air through the center of your tongue so here it goes like this exhale through the nose like this you can do for maybe five to nine times whenever you have a acidity you will you are going to remember me for sure and this will instantly calm down your uh, acidity and that fire inside you or sometimes you are very much upset with your partner or your boss so you can do this uh, cooling breathing exercise okay so it will lower your blood pressure it will lower your inside digestive fire and also it is very much recommended for the low uh, sorry high bp patients so sometimes hypertensive is because of the hereditary also so those people also can be uh, like they can do it for five to nine times every day now the next now the next one uh, next sister name is chitkari here you have to roll your tongue and touch the upper palate so so the it is a split ac so you will get the air through the side of it so like this hope you understood so the chidali is chidkari and sadanda with your teeth so you are just inhaling through the teeth through the nose when you're doing it are you feeling your mouth and your throat is super cool so you are actually fitting an air condition inside your system so whenever your air condition is down you can the last one there are two balancing breathing that is called as one is brahmari and the uh, yeah, nadi shodhana that is a last purification so let's go for the nadi shodhana that is the uh, purification the breathing purification ex exercise so here you have to start this is little bit complicated so i advise you to see my youtube video whenever you go for this practice so you are in from the left out through the right out through the left this is one cycle start from the left and then circle it and leave through the left that means you are collecting the air and you did a circle and then you exhale through the left itself then only it will be complete so you can do wrong by this way so here you inhale and then you exhale and you inhale exhale again you took and if you leave through the right then it's wrong so you have to have that one circle and exhale through the left itself like that you can do 3 to 5 times to balance yourself so whenever you are feeling i'm not balanced i feel something wrong in me and i need to decide certain things properly uh, sometimes you feel you are lost with your thoughts and you want to excel in your studies and you are not able to concentrate much and you feel you are not focused sometimes these all condition and for your day to day life this nadi shodhana pranayama is very very important and it will give you a very uh, good clarity in your thoughts so and you will be very calm after doing this nadi shodhana pranayama so this is the brahmari pranayama brahmari pranayama is actually a de stressing breathing technique it will this is actual uh, actually i give this brahmari pranayama in anger management stress management so whenever you are too hyper and you're too um, like you know your emotions are really too much like happiness is more your um, sadness is more your worries are more everything is a little bit extra in you then you can go for this brahmari pranayama and you are too angry sometimes and you are short tempered those people can go for this brahmari pranayama and exhale the humming sound so here you go Mm. 
like this you will come to a shanti okay om shanti 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 hi so this is the last breathing exercise that is nothing but brahmari pranayama it opens up your brain cells it is very good to relax each and every brain cells inside you and whatever emotions you are holding after 10 times or 9 times of breathing exercise breathing of brahmari it is brahmari means honey bee so the male when you, when a male does does it it will be sounding like a male honey bee and when a female does it it sounds like a female honey bee thus the brahmari pranayama came to existence like because of the honey bee sound i teach this to my students i always get a question that where do i exhale you know because there is only one inhalation and you you didn't tell me teacher where to exhale so what i used to tell them is when you are in, inhaling exhalation happens automatically with the om the humming sound okay the humming sound uh, ex, you know the breath is distributed equally through the exhalation itself so when you are inhaling then you close the ear and then hmm, there is an exhalation and humming sound is actually together so you don't have to worry that where i need to exhale in that so brahmari pranayama you can do fight five to nine times in every day to calm down yourself whenever you are feeling angry whenever you are feeling anxious whenever you feel a lot of curiosity inside you are not able to decide properly in your life you are confused in all these conditions you can practice uh, the last breathing exercise for the day that is pramari pranayama so with this i finish all the hatha yoga breathing exercise series from the bhastrika pranayama till the pramari pranayama if there is any doubt i will clear the doubts and since from my instagram hi to all very good morning yes uh, any doubts please ask i can clear it now and then because when you practice you see uh when you watch my demonstration you will not um, understand like you know t- until and unless you practice it then when you practice the day you start practicing you will get minimum 10 doubts so this is the difference between when you watch it and when you practice it so try to practice and see the difference in you i have demonstrated almost uh, nine breathing exercise for the day this is a traditional breathing explained in hatha yoga pratipika and there are certain uh, exercises other than this called as abdominal breathing belly breathing uh, 4 is to 7 is to 8 there are different breathing diaphragm breathing that is actually uh, needed for our day to day life but it's not traditional so i explained that in a different live session and this traditional hatha yoga pradipika breathing exercise is from the you know grand grand grandfathers we got all these so it is um, everyone must practice this to understand the beauty of our own breath so with this i am closing that you know our life is involved in this inhalation and exhalation we we are not giving importance for our breathing till it stops so please try to understand prevention is always better than cure don't wait for some crisis to happen so try to practice each and everything in your day to day life and see the miracle happening just because of a breathing and breathing is actually if it's better or a breathing exercise i will tell breathing is the best one because if breathing can control all your emotions physical mental emotional and spiritual health whereas yoga is having certain limitation to certain people certain medical issues but all the medical issues all the ages can practice a pranayama that is the benefit of pranayama and i told you all your emotions are involved with your breathing so whenever you feel Uh, you, no one in this window including me can claim that we are very happy with our emotions every day to, today i will be happy the next moment i can be angry and, and the next moment i can be confused so with the breathing if you are able to tackle yourself if you know how to handle yourself you don't have to depend on anyone so i i think i'm giving you a small tip every week that makes you a self healing master 
or you can be a self doctor for yourself with this i close today's live session see you and stay tuned with my live session those who have attended in instagram please watch my youtube video for more video and uh, uh, audio clarity and it will be saved in 12 hours in youtube so you can